Hey, I'm Scott Siller. I've been fishing professionally since 2013. Bassmaster opens. And for 2021, we're going to change gears. We're fishing the National Professional Fishing League. You ain't going to want to miss this one. How'd you get introduced into the outdoors? Growing up out in Wyoming, uh, you know, there wasn't a lot to do. We lived out in the country. So, uh, you know, really all we had to do was go out, go out and get on our three wheelers and go up in the hills. We'd always pack rods and hit the little creeks for brook trout and catch birds and whatever. So yeah, it's just kind of my upbringing out there in Wyoming. Dad take you fishing when you were younger? Oh yeah, yeah, Dad, and then it sent me out to Oregon in the summers for uh, to visit with my grandparents. I'd spend a month or two out there, and my grandparents lived uh, on about five acres, and they had a big creek that ran through, and it was full of uh, trout. So again, nothing else to do but go fishing. So, and then you know, trout fishing, I feel like is a uh, it's one of the, I, I, I think as far as like a species of fish, you know, with matching the hatch and being quiet and all the things you need to do, I feel like it kind of, if you go from trout fishing to bass fishing, you're going to have kind of a big advantage right off the bat as far as, um, you know, matching the hatch and it's a little uh, Zebco and it's like most everybody. Pretty fish. Not bad. Not bad. A couple pounds at least. Yeah. Two or three. So how long have you been fishing professionally? Seven years. So this will be my eighth year. 2013 was my first year doing the Northern Opens. That was when they only had three tournaments. Um, I was working full time from 13 to 20. So I did the Northerns for three or four years and then they got rid of the Northerns and had two divisions, the Easterns and Centrals. So I did the Easterns for three or four years. There was four of those each year. And then uh, 2020 was my first year fishing full time and I did the Centrals and the Easterns. Before this, you were a police officer. Yep, 25 years as a cop up in Milwaukee, and I don't think I could have got out at a better time. Yeah. <laughs> so, you have COVID and all the riots, and yeah, I'm glad I'm done with it, and I feel horrible for the guys that are still doing it. I'm proud of them and wouldn't want to do it. So now you're moved down here. You did the, the the opens last year was the goal to try to qualify for the elites or was it just to get into a classic is that the is that isn't that everyone's ultimate goal yeah no i wanted to qualify Sorry. for the elites you're good I, I wanted to try to qualify for the elites in 2020 that was sort of the plan and um even though i'd already signed a contract with the mpfl i figured i had the best of both worlds if i got into the elites great i'd had to make a decision which one to fish but um, but all year I was super excited to do the MPFL for 2021 and uh, now I'm really, really excited about it. I think it's going to be a pretty cool deal and um, I think there's a lot of buzz and excitement amongst all the guys that are fishing it and just have to see how it goes. 
what drew you to uh, join an NPFL? You know, the opens, I enjoyed fishing the opens, but when you break it down, uh, you know, 200, 220 pros in a tournament, and they pay 40 spots, and, you know, you come out and you practice for a week, and if you're, you know, fortunate to get a check, if you're not up in the top and you're, you know, 20, 20th to 40th, you know, your check is like two grand. And, uh, it, you know, with a $1,900 entry fee and your expenses and everything else, it just, just doesn't add up. It just, it's just a very expensive thing to do. But the NPFL, it's 125 guys. I know it's a, a stiffer entry fee, but they pay 44 spots. So one out of three is going to get a check and uh, the last check still would cover your expenses, your entry fees, and put a little cash in your pocket. So for me, it was kind of a no-brainer if you're, you know, if you want to afford to do this sport, you got to have, I guess, a little better entry fee or a little better payout. Uh, and that's kind of really what it came down to. You know, the other thing too is the ownership group. Brad and Al and I don't know the other guy's name. Yeah. Paul, Brad, oh, yes. Al, and Michelle, you know, they, they, uh, they're on top of everything. And I feel like they've made it a priority to bring together uh, anglers that it's almost like a team. It's almost like your teammates, even though you're competing against each other, they've done a really good job of um, getting good personalities, you know, and not letting, um, you know, guys that are going to, create problems so they've created this family environment already um, they've already they've said and they've proven already how important it is for them to showcase the anglers do everything you know I mean they've got um, uh, they just set up a voting system where you know if it's something that they can't decide what decision to make they're gonna put it out to the anglers and I just think that's a great idea they're just they're very angler friendly yeah, uh, you know, and and that's exciting. They're all in, and if they're all in, you're seeing the angler say, you know what, we're all in too, you know, and uh, I think it's going to be a big deal. I really do. I think it's going to be a really really cool first year. Um, I think it's going to gain a lot of popularity amongst other anglers that didn't get in this time around, and uh, you know, if you don't get in now, when it does get popular and they set up their uh, you know, feeder system into the MPFL, it's going to be hard to get in. It's a 125 boat field. You know, there's not, there's a lot of anglers out there in the country right now doing this pro tournament thing. There's just not a lot of spots. So, is there one spot, one tournament you're really looking forward to more than any of them, any of the six this year? No. Um, we go to Winnebago, which is in Wisconsin. I fish Winnebago uh, not very many times, and the times I was there it was in the spring. So, you know we're going to be up there in the summertime so i'm actually a little more nervous about that than any of them because coming from wisconsin you're going to have an expectation that you're going to do well and, mm -hmm. and it's not a lake that you know that i know very well so but i'm excited to fish all of them i think you know ufala is going to be a blast i haven't fished any of them other than winnebago in the springtime i've never been on any of these lakes so oh i take that back the harris chain i've been on but now i'm excited about all of them I think uh, Ufala is going to be a blast. Pickwick is going to be cool. Um, Grand Lake should be a good time. I don't know. I just, I think they're all going to be good. Wright Patman, I'm not looking forward to that one. That's just because it's, rumor has it, it's like a stump field. And, oh, yeah. And I'm pretty good at hitting stuff with my boat, so <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that. But, uh,. Maybe that'll just be a trolling motor deal for me. I'll just launch the boat, put the trolling motor down, and start fishing. <laughs> so, catching retreads. Yeah, whatever. Catching whatever I can catch. But, uh, yeah. And that's the other thing, too. I think the strategy that's going to go into this deal is going to be is going to be new to some guys. Um, you know, I've only fished uh, a three-day, you know, in the opens. I've made a cut once. Is that a fish? No. Um, so to manage your fish for three days, especially on some of these lakes, I don't know how, like Winnebago, for example, I don't think, I mean, three days is a long time on that lake. It's not a big fish factory. I don't even think it's got a lot of numbers, but who knows? I could be wrong.
but you, you follow should hold up and you need to catch a fish. Have you set any goals for yourself for the year with NPFL? My goal going into it is to get a check in every tournament. That's my goal. Um, you know, I mean, just get a limit every day and try not to lose anything. That's, I mean, that's like it is even in the opens. I mean, you really gotta, for example, there's times where Florida is a good example. You know, you can catch some big ones on top water, but I feel like you don't have a lot of opportunities to get that eight pounder in the boat. So I want something that when they do bite, I can get them in the boat. So, you know, the chatter bait, the single hook lures, um, and that's probably how I'm gonna approach the MPFL. I mean, there's times you're gonna have to throw a crank bait or top water, but if I can get away with a jig, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna definitely force feed a jig as much as I can. Let's see what happens. What are some of the toughest things about being a professional angler? Besides dealing with media. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Probably the travel and finding decent places to stay where you don't have to worry about your truck or boat getting broke into or stolen. Yeah. Because you know a lot of these cities you go to, you have no idea the area, so you know that's probably one of the tougher things um i feel like there's a lot of pressure from you know you want to do good for uh the people that support you you know the guys that you came through the ranks with that are still back fishing the club circuits because you know they got jobs and whatever and they follow you and you know letting them down that if you don't do well that kind of stinks and then uh you know i think the added uh responsibility of uh, quarterly reports and stuff for your sponsors that's they're demanding I mean they want video they want reviews and um, that gets tough but I'd say definitely the travel it's a wrap for today uh, had a blast out here we had a beautiful day weather wise uh, water temps mid 60s it's about to go down out here on Kissimmee and Toho um, but today Ran the nitro around, ran it hard. Mercury, want to thank them for putting out a great product. That engine took us around this lake in no time. Uh, some of the fish cats that you're going to see, uh, cash and rods using a cash and flipping stick, and uh, 65 pound Bass Pro Braid, and the Gambler Burner Craw. Um, that's what we were doing punching, and then uh, caught some on a, a Bass Pro Sticko, uh, Senko type worm, and fished the grass with that. Um, again with a cash and rod. So I want to thank all my sponsors, Mercury, Optima Batteries for power and all these electronics. I've never had a battery issue with my Optimas. Uh, cash and rods, Syslogic, and uh, of course Mercury. So thanks for watching. You can follow me on social media, Scott Siller on Facebook, Scott Siller on Instagram, and uh, I got a YouTube channel, Scott Siller, that I'll be uploading some videos for 2021. And uh, Hit me up if you have any questions or you want to get out and do some fishing. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe, click up here. If you want to see our last video, it should be right here. Take a kid fishing, get your fish on. Cheers.